I mean, you were talking about, you know, the difference in how music has changed and how the industry Mm -hmm. has changed. Do you feel like that now, instead of being in the old school, you're on the forefront? Uh, I don't know about that. I think, you know, I'm trying to do something different. And I I watch Moneyball once a week so I can (laughs) get inspired. Because there's a few lines from that that I live by. by. First of all, first one through the fence gets bloody. Yeah. Adapt or die. Yeah. Um, oh, and then there's another couple lines that I always pull from that movie, but it's true. You know, we're constantly changing and constantly evolving in every way. So in this industry, so I'm trying to find a way to, you know, what's another way besides spending a half million dollars to go out and promote a record? What's another way of doing this? Because I don't have that anymore. I don't have the label deal, and it's not. It wasn't an option for this project. When I, you know, my agreement leaving my label made it not an option for this project so I'm like okay I still have to make music that's who I am right so I had to kind of find my way if you weren't making music what would you do I'd be doing something in the music business it's what I've done my entire life like I was a latchkey kid my mom worked all the time and I would listen to records music was my company it was my friend it understood me you know it was saying about what I was feeling I'm like oh my gosh you know, this is what I'm exactly what I'm feeling, and and I hear that from people now. Yeah. Like, there's the uh, the title song on the record's called "Me," and it talks about you know I'm somebody's daughter, I'm somebody's friend, I'm somebody's sweetheart, and so you know it just talks about all the things we try to be as as women. Because if it's broken, you have to fix fix it. If it's sick, you have to heal it. If it's not done, you should do it. If you feel obligated to make sure everything is taken care of, and at times you feel like you're pulled way beyond what you're made of and mm. so that's what that song is about and to have somebody I've and in Facebook too they post and they're like I just heard this song I needed it or I just read what you're going through you know with your mom um, I thought I was alone I'm going through the same thing and music and so to hear people say that about my music is surreal in the sense because that's what music was for me yeah. you know it's by myself I'm like what, this what person gets you? me what did you listen to when you were little that you were like oh man that that is that is a God. big difference maker that is the album that i can harken back to as i listen to that and it it stirs emotion um gosh there's so much again i remember i grew up on outside of boston right so there's a lot of pop a lot of rock music right, up right. there at that time i wasn't exposed to country music till i was about 13 years 12 years old 13 years old Um, And that's when the Judds came in and, you know, Reba, and and I think it was the realness and the relatability. And Reba McIntyre is somebody who always, always her her image was about strong, hardworking, like that hardworking woman. And they always say, never meet your hero. Well, I'm glad I met her because she's stronger she's kinder than you would think than, than you know than the perception she's harder working than you would ever imagine oh, yeah. it's pretty sick yeah, like it's like it's like someone took a magnifying glass on your hero and it made it even bigger as opposed to sometimes you meet him and you're like oh yeah <laughs> you're nothing like i thought you were <laughs> i've had a couple of those we won't talk about those oh let's talk about them <laughs> That's the bonus let's do <laughs> that is the bonus